Um, yeah, this session is meant for you guys. It's not meant for me to just kind of talk <laughs> forever. Uh, so feel free uh, to uh, type uh, your questions in uh, or any comments in. Uh, I've noticed I could see some of the comments that uh, people wrote saying, good morning, buenos dias. Um, so yeah, um, feel free to ask uh, any questions whenever you have them, okay? Um, and then also think at the end, so at nine o'clock, I'll, I'll try to finish around nine o'clock and then give you some time for a question and answer session. Um, yeah, are we good to go then, Trisha? It looks like it's good. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. All right. So, uh, yeah, digital technology and English language learning. Where does it prop? Where does it drop? The reason I wrote these subtitles is sometimes I think technology can be great. And then there's other times, and I think we've all experienced this, right, is sometimes it doesn't work so well. And so we'll kind of talk about uh, a range of things. Um, we're also going to briefly talk about artificial intelligence because that is the hot topic now. Everybody's talking about it. Um, it seems like there's two sides of it. There's, there's either it's wonderful, fantastic, or it's awful and we're going to lose all of our jobs. Um, and so we'll have a discussion about that as well. All right. Um, so let's move on. All right. Uh, so as I said, I live in Turkey and in Turkey, uh, gold is very valuable. Gold is the way that uh, so many things happen, the birth of a child, marriage. Um, yeah, just lots of different occasions. Gold is very important in Turkey. I'm not sure about Costa Rica, uh, but here in Turkey, gold is quite important. I wanted to ask you guys, how much do you think these are worth in Costa Rica? So on the screen is a form of gold. How much do you think these are worth? I, I believe you can go ahead and put that in the, type that in the chat box and I think it will pop up on my screen and I could see your answers. I hope at least. Any guesses? Sure, it depends on the weight and pureness. Two million dollars. Wow, that's a lot. That'd be wonderful if I had if I had these pieces. Anybody else? Wanna guess? All right. I'm gonna give you a hint. No idea. <laughs> that's a very honest answer. I'll give you a hint of the chemical uh, formula for this type of gold, all right? I've given it to you, and I know all English teachers are fantastic at math, at science, at chemistry, right? Uh, so now that I give you the chemical formula, what do you think the worth is? Any guesses? No idea again. I yeah. So Sergio, Sergio, I think you know some chemistry, right? So actually, this is not um, pure gold. Uh, someone had talked about what you know what the what's inside of it. So actually, this is fool's gold. Are you familiar with fool's gold? Fool's gold is something. It looks like gold. You're like, all right, you're wonderful. You're happy because you think it's gold, but it's actually not gold at all, right? Why would I show this to you in this presentation? Why would I start this presentation by showing you a picture of fool's gold? How is this related to this topic of uh, technology? Any guesses?
So fool's gold, it looks <laughs> exactly. Sometimes they're not as what they seem. Yeah, technology can appear to solve things, right? And sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't, right? Let's take a look at some of the research. Uh, there has been research that say, you know, technology is a game changer. It's transformative. Teachers, students, parents all believe this uh, back in 2006. This is going to change everything, right? Um, I've, I've heard that about the iPhone. I've heard that about a lot of things, right? That it changes everything. Um, there's also uh, a lot of research, qualitative research on technology that since the 1960s has actually been quite positive. Qualitative meaning in words like, yes, it's motivating, it feels engaging. Um, yeah, there's a, a lot of qualitative research that says technology is fantastic and it's very positive. Uh, I was even uh, sent an article about virtual reality. Virtual reality boosts English language learning. What's interesting in this article, it talked about one teacher being happy, I think it was in Japan, using virtual reality he says you know i i think my students are more engaged and this and that um but this is it was interesting it was just one teacher and it wasn't qualitative at all uh where it was qualitative it wasn't quantitative right it didn't actually look at the numbers did it actually boost scores or not so this is the qualitative stuff you know people think you know technology is great and uh it's going to solve the world is going to help everybody out. Um, but when you look at the qualitative stuff, the words versus the quantitative, another picture arrives that actually the evidence that this is changed the game of teaching, right? It actually doesn't exist. And when comparing digital technology to just kind of traditional teaching, generally it's average at best. And a lot of it is actually below average in supporting academic achievement. I found this was really interesting uh, when I first read this several years ago. Um, yeah, it, in traditional classrooms uh, that don't use computers, right? The impact on computers and those not using it, it's, yeah, um, it's about average. Using it or not using it, it actually doesn't make that big of a difference. And this is not just recently. This has been for the last 30 years. Actually, this was dated almost 10 years ago. So I imagine the last 40 years, not much has changed where a traditional classroom or a uh, classroom with using a lot of technology, not much has changed when you look at it quantitatively, looking at the numbers of scores, right? Um, but I think there is a few good things that happens with digital technology. And that's the same thing with fool's gold. Fool's gold, yeah, if you find it and you bring it somewhere, very few people are gonna buy it. But there are some good things uh, about fool's gold. Does anybody know anything that you could do with fool's gold? What can you do with fool's gold? Any guesses? My favorite one is you can fool people on April Fool's Day, right? I don't know if you celebrate April Fool's Day in Costa Rica, uh, but that's always a nice thing to do, saying you got gold for someone, but actually it's not gold. Anything else? So another thing you can do is actually, when you strike it against steel, it can start a fire. That's pretty cool, right? Not all rocks can do that. And then lastly, and I think this is the most important one, it is sometimes near real gold. And I think it's the same thing with technology. There's a lot of techno technological web tools, apps, this and that. Um, but there's sometimes where there is some really good things uh, out there, some great educational tools out there that can really help. Okay. Um, so. What they did is they looked at when uh, John Hattie uh, and his colleagues looked at when uh, computers uh, did help learning, that in, in, it did increase uh, academic achievements. And what they found is it's when teachers received training on the use of computers. This sounds very simple and basic, 
But actually, you, I think you'd be surprised at how many teachers are told to use technology, but are never actually taught to use it, right? Um, so it is important if teachers receive technology training, that is helpful. Uh, when students can work in pairs, that is really helpful when using technology. And then also, I think all of us have to realize that computers have a wonderful uh, advantage of giving instant feedback. Right? And a lot of our students, they want that instant feedback. They don't want to fill out the answers on Friday and wait until Monday when they've already forgotten what they've done and hear what the answers are. Computers do have that um, way, that, that advantage of being able to give feedback immediately. I also said at the beginning of this presentation, we're going to talk about AI. And I recently read uh, a very interesting article on AI, how educators are using AI in the classroom. And so this was showing a positive uh, example of how AI is being used. And it was really interesting. It lined up exactly with this. So in this article, it talked about um, the teachers, they received training um, on how to use AI, right? Um, they asked students to exchange topics. So they had students working in pairs. And then also they were really surprised that yeah, the computers, the AI actually gave feedback very, very quickly, right? And so it was interesting to see that, yeah, AI can be great if it lines up with these ideas of teachers receiving training, if students are put in pairs when they work on this, and then also seeing that uh, the feedback given by the computers is actually very quick, all right? So let's talk about AI, artificial intelligence, for five minutes. What are your thoughts of artificial intelligence? As I said, I think I've, I've heard people kind of on extremes, either it's the best thing for teaching and it is the worst thing for teaching. What are your thoughts on artificial intelligence and education? There was a recent article um, that I read uh, about half of this was secondary teachers, half of secondary teachers believe AI will change education for the better, right? So that is great, right? And it is around 50% think that it will change. But I also think there's a whole another 50% that are like, ooh, right? Um, I also think uh, it's generally usually the older generation that are quite scared of AI, right? And it's, it seems like it's the younger generation. Um, not always, but it, it does seem like that is kind of the way uh, in general. Um, yeah, you know, what does OUP say? So OUP, I don't know if they've said anything definite, but there have been articles, and I can share uh, an article with you uh, at the end of this uh, event. And it says, yeah, actually, AI is just another tool in the toolbox. Um, it, it's, it can be, as Rosa Maria said, if it's used in a, a correct way, in a good way, it can be really beneficial, right? Um, and I think it's important to think of AI not as changing everything and, you know, the world's going to be completely different in, you know, 30 days or something. That um, is just another tool that can be used, cannot be used. It's up to you. Right? Um, but then also how you use it is quite important. Um, Socrates, so this is yeah, uh, a philosopher, I think it was 2,500 years ago. What do you think he would say about AI? What would he say? What do you think he would say? So I think, who knows, because he's, he's not looking at them right now. I think what he would say is, uh, AI is a threat to our ability to think and to process knowledge. Why bother to learn or remember anything, right? And I think there's a lot of people out there saying, oh my God, this is crazy. I, I've seen videos, I'm sure you've seen it too, where a, a student's doing homework and is just saying, Alexa, what is 43 times 51? And then Alexa says, oh, here's the answer. And he writes the answer. Uh, what is this and what is that? And then gives the answer. And so then, it looks like, yeah, we're not asking our students to think at all or work out the problems at all, right? 
uh, we're asking the computer to just give us the answer. And I think there's a lot of people that worry about it. But I think also on the flip side, you could see that student asking Alexa for the answer. He's using technology in a smart way, right? Um, this idea, artificial intelligence, is a threat to the ability to think and process, process knowledge. Why bother to learn and remember anything? The reason I think he would say this is because he did say this. He didn't say this about AI, though. He said this about writing. So Socrates was all about being uh, in a group and being up in front of people and uh, saying your thoughts to everybody. And he actually did say writing is a threat to our ability to think and process knowledge, right? Why bother to learn and remember anything? So he, was re he really didn't like it when his students had tablets uh, and then they would read from that and everything. Yeah, he thought it was awful. Um, and it isn't it interesting. So he thought, you know, writing is going to be, you know, the end of the world. But actually, writing, I, I think all of us would agree that uh, writing and reading has actually helped us, right? Um, so it makes us think, you know, we might think this is the end of the world, but actually it could be really, really helpful. I think also if you think about 500, six, you know, 500, 600 years ago, the invention of the printing press, the mass uh, printing. Uh, I think there was people at that time that said, oh, we don't want, you know, uh, villagers or ever reading. They wouldn't understand it. They wouldn't know what to do with this information. Um, but now we think it is wonderful. And I wonder if this is the same thing where AI uh, is scared a lot of people and it's, they're thinking, all right, this is going to change everything. This is going to be awful. But actually, maybe it's just encouraging us to evolve and move in a, in a new direction. All right. um, so yeah, there are times when computers do work. And uh, this is from uh, John Hattie uh, again. And he says, you know, actually, if you use technology in the same way that you teach, right? then it could actually help people, right? And so I think the big question is, how do people learn, right? Showing a bunch of YouTube videos, I don't know if that's the way of teaching, uh, but doing some pre-viewing uh, of a video, going through a video and breaking it down after the video, that could actually help a lot, right? Uh, spaced learning, uh, being able to quiz yourself, taking notes, uh, all of these things actually help people learn, right? Um, and so maybe if we use computers and technology, uh, just as how people learn, that can be really helpful, okay? Um, yeah, so let's get to some practical ideas. And so these practical ideas, I, so I'm actually going to stay very clear of AI, right? Because I think AI, just kind of hearing that word, it, it scares some people. And then, yeah, it's not, I don't know. Uh, I'm also kind of in between, like, is it that good? Is it a waste of time? Um, but I think there's some things, I think sometimes when we think of digital technology, we think of a lot, when actually if we keep it very simple, that could actually be really helpful, right? So I'm gonna just show you some really simple activities that you can do um, that can help our students uh, and especially help students that don't have the money, right? Don't have money, so they don't have the newest iPhone. They don't have, maybe they don't have good Wi-Fi at home. They don't have uh, internet connectivity uh, that much. Um, yeah, I, I think that is the way it is. So look at things that can be simple so that you can include everybody in these uh, lessons that include technology. So here's my first idea. So a lot of times in class, we ask our students to speak. And a lot of times, uh, we also just kind of ask, all right, you speak. No, you speak. All right. Uh, Mary, speak. Jose, speak. And each person is taking one at a time. And as a teacher, we want to listen. We want to assess this, right? But actually, it could take a lot of time doing this, right? Um, and so one simple thing you can do with your students is ask students 
to use their phone. So I want you to look at your phone. If you, I'm sure you have it next to you. Everybody's got their phone next to you, right? Um, so I have something called, I don't know if you can see this. So this, whoops, that one right there is a voice recording app. And I believe it doesn't matter if it's iPhone, if it's Android, everybody has this on their phone. It's pre-installed. It doesn't require any internet at all. It is on every single smartphone. Wonderful, right? Um, and so I asked my students to open that up. So it looks like something like this. And then that big red button is where you re record. And then uh, you can use it. So for instance, um, I can hit record. Do you see this? I can, oops. I can start talking and it'll pick that up. I can pause it. And now with my app or with my recording, I can, I get, oops, I could send it to people. I could copy it. Sorry, this is in Turkish. It's not in English. Um, but I could do many things with it. Um, what you can do, and this is what I've done with my students, is ask students to record their voice either at home or even in the classroom. And then upload it to your Moodle, upload it to your LMS system, uh, send it to you. I don't know if you share your uh, in a WhatsApp group or something, but you have the students practicing it. They could send it to you, and you could set, assess it later, right, uh, at your own time. What I like about this, this is my favorite part, is students, they want to do well, right? And so they will they will practice this. They'll record themselves, and then they'll listen. Like, oh, that's not so good. Uh, they'll record themselves a second time. They'll record themselves a third time. When they feel good, then they'll send it. And this is wonderful. Why? Because we're working on uh, fluency. Getting them to practice again and again and again can be really, really helpful uh, for students. Um, as a teacher, I can give an example and send it to everybody, right? And they can listen to that. They can listen to the, uh, on the bus, or in their car, uh, at home. They can practice that. They could repeat after that and then record their own voice. Something super simple, but actually could be really helpful uh, for your students and for yourself when you want to assess everybody in the classroom. One other thing uh, sometimes I do is I try to, uh, when we have dialogue work, so our course book says, all right, let's have someone be student A, someone be student B. Uh, they ask their questions and they answer the questions. What you could also do is have one person ask the questions. So everybody asks the questions, but they need to put in their pauses, right? And they record that and then they can share their phones. So for instance, we ask the whole classroom, everybody ask your questions and make sure you have pauses. So I'll give you an example. Hi, Trisha, how are you? Okay, uh, what are you gonna do this weekend? Oh, nice. And do you have any plans for food? Okay, thank you. And so now I have that recording, all right? And now I can have my students, so everybody's recorded. I have my students pass their phone to the next person. They listen to it. Can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. Um, this is great. Oh, nice. And do you have any plans for food? All right. And so everybody then gets a chance to practice. They hear their own voice. Uh, and then as you as a teacher can walk around and monitor this. This is also wonderful because it takes basically no space on your phone. I have several students that they say, I don't have any space. <laughs> I, it's an old phone and I don't have any space. Well, this takes almost no space at all. What is different? Some people prefer WhatsApp, whether you record your voice and send it on WhatsApp. I don't like that because it's instant. Once you record it, it's sent right away, where this allows them to record again and again and again, and then um, be able to send what they think is really good. Wonderful. So, Johanna, you are using it. Excellent. And you find it really wonderful. Good. Excellent. That's really nice. All right. So that is one simple but quite effective way of using technology in your classroom. 
Another one is using uh, the tools in your classroom. I, I imagine you you guys are using Oxford University Books right now. Using the classroom presentation tool, you can click on play. You can do uh, slow, normal, fast. You can look at uh, the words. That is really wonderful, right? Uh, I imagine you've used a few of these settings before. Am I right when I say that? Um, so what's cool is this is not just in the classroom presentations uh, tool. This could be anywhere, including in YouTube. So what I want to do is I want to show you um, what I see, uh, the potential of using YouTube. All right. So let's wait to see that I'm sharing this. Are you seeing, so I think Trisha, can you switch to my shared screen? Oh, excellent. All right, so here is an example of YouTube. So this is a uh, New York Times opinion. This is from the New York Times. So here, we all know this. We have the closed captions. We can put that in, right? Uh, here, we can uh, s uh, slow it down. We can speed it up. This is quite nice, right? Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different options. And my favorite option here is actually when you click on these three dots, click on here, all, not all of videos, but I would say 90% of videos on YouTube have a transcript. And this is done by artificial intelligence. And if you click on it, all of it is right here, right? So you have the whole transcript right here. And so what I can do is I could actually copy this um, this is a long video, seven minutes, and it's at New York Times, so I probably not. But maybe you would comp, comp, copy a minute of it, and then just like you would do in a normal classroom, you would cut this up into strips. Uh, you would maybe put in a few blanks, and so they have to listen and hear. Um, yeah, I, I think you can use this transcript thing uh, to show a lot of really cool things uh, and just kind of do listening, speaking, uh, trying to figure out what is going on in the video. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of really cool things that you can do with uh, video um, on YouTube, on, let's say, Edpuzzle, on, was it, Vimo, uh, a lot of video things. Uh, and that can enhance uh, your classes with using video. Has anybody tried that before? I'm curious. All right. So again, oh, perfect. Okay. So Sandra's using the cut. Yeah. And so, yeah, you, as in, you can see, you could also show the lyrics or show uh, the script. Uh, you could speed it up, slow it down. And I think a lot of students really think this is practical, practical and helpful for them. All right. Another one we can do is do online surveys. Have you guys done online surveys? I imagine you have. Um, yeah, so these are four websites that I use a lot. Um, Mentimeter, I don't know if you use, so Mentimeter is my favorite. I, I think that is absolutely wonderful. Uh, there's also Google Forms, MS Forms, that's Microsoft, MS Forms, and then also Answer Garden. These are all really, really nice uh, and great ways of collecting data uh, from your students. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Sandra. Um, and Actually, for me, I find this, it's like gold. I really learn a lot from my students through that. I am going to allow you to get to this QR code, and I would be very curious on your thoughts right now. And what's really cool about this is you can see the results live, all right? So go ahead, take out your phones, put it on camera, and go ahead and uh, fill out this form. All right, so I'm going to give you about a minute. It's a very simple survey that I've sent to you. And then we could also look at how the results come in. So I'm going to give you another 50 seconds or so. So go ahead, use your camera, and the link should come up, and you should see the, the forms, that office, that com. Does everybody count that? All right. 
I'm now going to show you what that looks like live, right? And I, I think this is really nice. So again, let's, if Trisha, if you could share my screen, excellent. All right. So I can now see, so this is my, uh, what's it called, uh, survey, and I could see the responses. So right now, look, I've got four responses. So I have people putting it in. We got Padlet, YouTube, depends on the purpose. That's right, nice answer. How would you rate yourself? So at uh, UNED, we got kind of three and four, excellent. Um, so we have kind of people in the middle with AI, right? People with exit tickets, so nobody's actually used exit tickets. I only have five responses. What's going on? Uh -huh, there we go. We got six now. Excellent. So we could also look at this. Yeah. So, ah, interesting. I've never heard of that. Natural reader and twee.com. That's, that's interesting. Kahoot, YouTube, Padlet, YouTube. I'm familiar with all of these. Excellent. Um, and so then, yeah, you could see this live with your students, and this could really help you guys. Um, so now we have seven people. Uh, we also have Jamboard. Jamboard is fantastic, right? Uh, so this is really interesting. Uh, exit tickets. Exit tickets is generally uh, a ticket given to students at the end that looks kind of like this, actually. You ask a few questions. So we got one, two, three, four. I have four questions. And you ask students how they're doing. Um, what, what do they like in class? What do they not like in class? And now that I have this information, and you see it's still updating, uh, now that I have this information, I can actually change the way I teach, right? I could help them. I say, all right, you guys are at, a, most of you are at a three. Let me help with that. Um, there's many people that say yes. There's only one person that says no. There's a couple of maybe, right? Um, and so, uh -huh. I see that many people are using this, so let's use that. Or maybe I see nobody's written such and such, so maybe I'm going to try that out. Or, no, I know many of my students are using YouTube a lot, so let's go with YouTube. So this can, so what I find is these kind of activities um, are gold for me, gold for the teacher. Uh, so this is, right. I'm, what I'm showing you right now is a form of an exit ticket. A lot of times I do it, I don't do it all the time, but I usually do it at the end of a week and I ask them, hey, what did you like in our classes? What didn't you like in my uh, class? Um, what do you wish I knew? Um, do you really understand, you know, present continuous tense? Do you still have questions? And also what I like about this, I don't know if you know this, is this is anonymous. So I have no idea. And I think when you allow uh, students to answer anonymously, uh, they feel more safe and uh, they're a lot more honest with you. Um, but I would say, think about that. Think about using uh, these uh, online surveys. And as I said, I think it can be real gold for you to learn their interest, how um, they like things. Uh, so this was a survey about technology. It doesn't have to be like, it could be about farm animals. It could be about literature. It could be about movies. It could be about whatever topic that you're learning in your course book at the moment. Um, but this information you could really pull out and be able to use to kind of change things around uh, in your lesson plan and find what works with your students. Okay. All right. And anyway, so that is uh, another very simple idea, but I think getting the results from this is really important uh, for teachers uh, to be able to adapt to their classroom. All right. I also think the telephone is like a digital Swiss army knife. You guys know what a Swiss army knife is, right? Usually it's those red things. This is, this is air conditioning, uh, but the, it's smaller than this, but it's usually red and it has that Swiss cross on it, right? But a Swiss Army knife, it's incredible. So it's got a knife, it's got like a saw, it's got a wine opener. Sometimes I've seen it with a toothpick or tweezers. It's got scissors. Uh, I saw one recently, it was incredible. It had a pen in it uh, and a USB in it. I don't know if you've ever seen, seen that. 
Um, so these these arm, Swiss Army knives are really cool. But I think the phone is the same thing. There's so many cool things in here um, that we're not using. Um, and I would say a lot of them, you don't need the internet at all. Uh, you could do some really cool things with this. Uh, and I also think it could be, it can be uh, a useful thing to show our students that uh, this piece of technology can actually be useful in studying, uh, that it can be useful in education. So I'm gonna give you a list of some really easy things that students can learn, uh, students can use, right? Um, so here we have it. Maps, weather, flashlight, clock, calendar, folio, camera, all of these things can actually be really, really useful in the classroom. So for instance, in uh, one of the books I'm using, let's say they're talking about Sydney, Australia. And I ask my students, where is Sydney, Australia? Or maybe it's New Delhi, India. And they'll say, I don't know. I said, well, take out your phone and let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's find out the weather. What is it like? Where is it? Um, what country is it part of? What is it near to? Is it close to Costa Rica? Is it far from Costa Rica? Um, yeah, I think you could do a lot of really cool things with maps. Uh, so that requires a little bit of internet, um, but that is something that could be quite useful. And then also it gives them access to the world where I think sometimes in these English uh, course books, it kind of says, talks about random places and they're like, well, where is that? And I've never heard of this place. And I don't really understand this where now, if they're looking at the course book and they have their phones, they could actually see it and go there. Uh, they could even look at right, how long would a flight be from uh, San Jose to, let's say, uh, Almaty, Kazakhstan, or something, right? Um, weather, I think weather is something really simple and something really nice. Uh, looking at their weather app, uh, talking about the weather, uh, making plans. So say, oh, I see, you know, the temperature next, so where I live next Friday is gonna be 40 degrees Celsius. What are we gonna do to cool down? Right, and so maybe they would use some kind of activity where they kind of make a plan based on the weather of that area, or maybe the weather somewhere else around the world. Okay, the flashlight. The flashlight is a really simple one, but I find it fantastic, um, especially with young kids. Uh, so having a flashlight, so you could kind of tell ghost stories. Right, this could be really fun, especially around the Halloween time uh, with your teenage year. Uh, I don't know if, yeah, your university students, I don't, I don't want to say adults because I don't think they're quite adults yet, um, but this is fun. But I also sometimes have them go on an adventure and I turn off the lights in the classroom and they pretend to go on an adventure just using something as simple as the flashlight. This is great to use when doing a role play, okay? Um, the clock, this seems like a very simple thing, uh, but doing alarms, so timing yourself all right go ahead and let's put in five minutes I'm, or put let's put in one minute i want you to be able to talk about this topic non-stop one minute everybody put this in go and everybody starts and they talk uh and it really tries to get them to think and to use the language uh and also what's great is when they're everybody's speaking nobody's actually listening to you and so they they feel more free to make mistakes um which is I think great, right? Uh, because we don't want students to be kind of full of anxiety and not wanting to speak English. Um, yeah, I also think there's also here, you could see you have the world clock. So also let's say, again, Sydney, Australia, there's something going on in Sydney, Australia. Yeah, they can type this in and see what time, see the time differences, right? Calendar can be really useful. Let's say next Friday, you have an exam. You say, all right, let's put, everybody put this into your calendar on your phone. At three o'clock, we have an exam on such and such, right? And now I want you to make a, a schedule for yourself. So on Monday, you're gonna study for 30 minutes on this, Tuesday this, Wednesday this, Thursday this, and by Friday, you'll uh, be ready for the exam. And what you're showing them, so it lo looks like a simple activity, but what you're showing them is when you're studying, it's not good to cram at the last second and, in the evening, right? Uh, the day before, we should actually be studying step by step, going through this and getting ready for it. Um, and so you're teaching 
students, hey, this, this telephone could be on your side and help you uh, create good studying habits. All right. The photo gallery is wonderful. Everybody loves to take photos. I don't know if Instagram is popular in Costa Rica, but it is definitely popular in uh, Turkey. Everybody wants to share their photos. Everybody wants to show their photos. Um, and I think you could actually use the photo gallery for a lot of great speaking activities, right? Um, yeah, using that, I, I mentioned some of you have already used that, but I think instead of saying no phones, you can't use it, take advantage of that saying, all right, I want you to find uh, a picture, not of you, but I want you to find a picture in the gallery that says something about your mood today or says something about your future plans, right? And it could be, you know, a random picture, um, but then it gets students to guess. And then also, yeah, it's very personal, right? Uh, so being able to show this and students actually really like to show these things. Uh, I would say the only problem is I have students, they love to share their photos. They say, look at this. And then look at this, and then look at this, and then look at this, and I, I, I don't want that, right? Because you're making, you're not helping them in speaking, right? Um, but I just have them focus on one photo and really talk about it. So, for instance, here's a photo. This is my kind of cover photo, and I, you can ask them. All right, have your partner guess. You know, who are these people? Oops, sorry. Guess who are these people? Where was I? When was this taken? Why do you think that? Right? Um, and get people talking and getting them interested and then have the student not say anything. And then at the end say, all right, actually, this is what was going on. This is where I was. This is what, what I was doing. Right? And the last thing that we can all use is the camera. Um, and so I think this is great. Uh, including with notes. Do you guys, I'm sure you on your phone you have a notes section. Do you have something like this? Oops. Notes. So you can actually uh, make a note. So let's make a new note. So for instance, I'm going to type in, let's let's make a flashcard. Nose. I, <laughs> my students don't know nose, so I'm going to do nose. And I'm going to do, let's take a picture. And I'll zoom in big. There we go. Excellent. Uh, and then, so now I've created my own flashcard, right? Uh, this is something quite silly, but actually quite enjoyable. And students are making their own flashcards uh, that are now personal. It's not using some dictionary that they're like, oh, I don't know what this means. I, I just wish I had the translation. Here, they could uh, make their notes, they could take pictures, uh, and that helps them remember to retain this information and also personalizes that language. All right. I hope that was helpful. So we went from AI, which is super like, oh, what's going on, to something really simple about how we can use the phone in simple ways to actually get a lot out of there. Um, what I'm showing you, so I'm showing you a few things. So one of them is ways to get a hold of me if you have more questions, if you want to follow me on social media. There is a QR code uh, about feedback. And this is, as I said, this is gold for me, right? Uh, gold for me to improve as a teacher, as a teacher trainer. Um, and so I could learn what I'm doing um, right and also what I'm doing wrong and make changes. Um, and then those who do fill the, out this QR code and leave their name and email, they will receive this digital badge and that will come to them you know, from Badger. Um, yeah, I hope that was OK. Uh, yeah, it was about 45 minutes, and I hope it gave you some ideas. We did talk about a range of things, um, but I hope that gave you a few ideas. Trisha, sorry, I've been talking a lot. Tell me. No, it's been great. Thank you so very much, Mr. Manthai, for your time and your thought-provoking presentation about digital technology and English language learning. Uh, before we continue to our time for questions, I must apologize since I introduced today's seminar with last year's name. I must have gone back in time briefly. <laughs> As you all know, uh, this year's seminar is called Reinventing Meaningful Trends in English Language Teaching Based on Creativity and International Perspectives. My apologies for the mistake.
Um, we will now open the floor for questions. You can write your questions in the chat and we will transfer them to our specialist. Uh, so please type your questions as concisely as possible. As we're waiting for some questions, I do have several comments that were made um, as you were doing your presentation. So I have from Sandra, uh, technology can be very useful, but students and even teachers can feel afraid of it and they might experience difficulties while using it. Mm -hmm. um, Rosa's comment, AI is very useful if it is used in the correct way. Susie uh, also says that AI could be a motivator for children because they are getting into it. Um, let's see. Anna comments that AI is useful if it's handled carefully and responsibly. Johanna makes the comment that we have to be open to work with technology, but of course it has to be used correctly, especially for educational purposes. Let's see what else we have here. Um, we need to be aware of what is trendy not necessarily using it um, in every as or every area that can be used, but for educational purposes. This was Susie's comment. Sandra also makes another comment. AI is quite useful and we need to embrace it in our sessions, which means we as educators must learn and get training on different tools that can enhance teaching and learning. Uh, Claire makes the comment that change is the only thing that is constant in life. We need to, we need to know how to deal and cope with this change. <clears throat> Johanna makes the comment, I use telephone recording as a practice for pronunciation and also to develop confidence among my students. And she considers it to be a very useful tool. And let's see, the last comment I have here is, uh, Susie says that schedules, planners, calendars, and all of that should really be part of the curriculum. So that's what I have as the comments so for, far. Let's see if there are going to be any other questions or if you would like to react to any of those comments. Yeah, the first one I thought was really interesting. Uh, so yes, some teachers are, are scared of using technology and also some students are scared of uh, use in technology. Um, and I think that's normal and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And so I think that's why I showed you at the very end, the practical ideas, those were just really simple things. And I think sometimes uh, what I find is uh, when I want to really try to do something, it takes me like two days to prepare and do this. And, and it turns out to be like a five minute activity. Um, so do we really need to spend all this time try to make the coolest, craziest thing with technology? Or what if we just use something very simple, some, some simple tools that don't require internet or require very little internet that don't require the newest phone or the newest tablet um, that students can use um, yeah, very easily and then show that you know this piece of technology can uh, help not just in language learning, but in learning in general. Uh, so I see in the chat box, uh, Sergio, Sergio wrote, how do you prevent distractions when using the phone in the classroom? I think that's a really important question. Um, I've dealt with that many times. I don't know if you've dealt with that, Sergio. I had one student, it was incredible. She, the phone was on her desk and she, every minute she had to look, what time is it? Every single minute. And it was just so annoying. Just like, come on, put your, put your phone down. Um, so uh, what I, what I, a lot of times what I do is I say, you know, no phones until the last five minutes of the class. And so then, uh, so everybody kind of focuses on that thing. Um, I also say, you know, this is a reward for you guys. Um, so let's do something with your phones the last five minutes. They can focus for about five minutes. I think that's not, that's great. But it's when it's like 20 minutes long of activity, that's when, they work a little bit and then they start looking at WhatsApp or they start looking at social media. And then, so yeah, it's important to keep uh, the time on these devices short and so that they're really focused on it and then they stop. Um, what I, why I do the last five minutes of class is uh, we focus on that activity and then 
just as they're going into social media, the bell rings and I say, all right, you know, see you guys later. Um, yeah, no distractions can be there. Um, but I also, it, it's great to show them how to turn off those distractions. So for instance, asking your students to put it on airplane mode and your students be like, why would I do that? We're not in the airplane and be like, oh, well, this will stop distractions, right? Uh, and also even when it's on airplane mode, uh, you can use a lot of these apps uh, because they're not connected to the internet. So uh, that's one thing. Um, yeah, distractions will happen, but I also think even without a telephone or a tablet or uh, technology, students will be distracted. They'll be looking outside, they'll be looking around, they'll be playing with their pencil. And so it's, it is important that we kind of move along in their class and not just say, hey, 20 minutes, use your phone. Yeah, that will definitely lead to more distractions and people getting off uh, the task. Thank you so much for that answer. Um, I don't have any more questions in the chat. So we just want to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mantha, for your presentation and such useful and practical insights on this topic. So thank you again for your time. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you guys find this useful, uh, practical, and then not think that technology is this some giant monster out there that's scary that it actually can be very simple and can be very useful for you and for uh, your students as well.